A lot of questions about vaccines. With almost 90% of adults fully vaccinated, the elderly and vulnerable protected months ago and every adult who wanted the vaccine should have it by now. Please, can you explain why new laws regulations have just been agreed by government to punish unvaccinated for an additional seven plus weeks? In other words, if we have that level of community vaccination, why shouldn't everybody be allowed to do everything equally? Because unfortunately, the case numbers are still very high. So we've got the highest case numbers in the EU right now. And what I'm particularly concerned about is the uh, profile of the disease in Northern Ireland, in Wales and in Scotland. So what they did over the last number of months was they more or less opened fully uh, in, for vaccinated and unvaccinated. And what we're seeing right now is a very, very sobering rise in cases. Scotland, for example, are more than two and a half times our case rate. Northern Ireland is about twice our case rate. Their hospitalisation figures are higher uh, and causing problems. So therefore, it's about a phased, a phased reopening. The, the other thing, if I could just say as well, Anton, though, is... There is an element to keeping people safe. And, you know, the, the chief medical officer and I were talking about this in the last few days, and he's made the point repeatedly that if you're choosing at this point to be unvaccinated, there's a very small number of people who can't be vaccinated, but it's a very, very small number. But if you're choosing at this stage to be unvaccinated, you are at risk. And we have to remember that this is a vicious disease. I was talking just last week to some, uh, some of the nurses who have been working on the COVID wards. And they said that they have decades of experience. They're used to dealing with people dying. They're used to the most difficult human experiences. And they said they and their colleagues were traumatised by just how vicious this disease is when it can get hold and make people very sick. So we also have to try and keep people safe. In that context, there are certain behaviours that the Taoiseach spoke about uh, in terms of the opening up and, and that have been in, in the various different plans. So like things like the 100% on public transport, Anybody who has been on a bus in late winter or in late autumn, early winter knows that feeling of you're cramped in an environment. Nobody wants to open the windows because it's freezing. The condensation is coming down the inside of the windows. Likewise, we're going to have nightclubs open. Likewise, we're going to have pubs open while at the same time we have the highest COVID case rates in, in Europe, among the highest. Is that wise? Well, what you'd be talking about there is after the 22nd of October, right? So there is obviously... Uh, the plan comes with a heavy caveat as always, which is it depends on the profile of the disease at the time. Um, the modelling we have from Professor Philip Nolan's group, he modelled various scenarios, have the disease stable or falling by the end of October, which would give us the room to to, to make that final step. And the, the, the case rate um, that you are predicating those decisions upon peaks when? depending on the scenario, but peaks roughly mid-October. Peaks mid-October? Yeah. So we are going to see case numbers increase. The current projections are we are going to see case numbers increase for another five to six weeks. Yeah, under under three of the four scenarios that we've, we've been presented with by the modelling group, cases will continue to rise uh, until mid-October. Uh, schools going back, colleges going back, people going back to workplaces. Uh, cases, unfortunately, they've been stable for, for, for the last while. But yes, the, the modelling team believe they will continue to rise. Another one about the confusion. Can you ask the Minister why it will still be a statutory requirement to put on a mask getting a carton of milk in my local shop, but I can go to the pub for a day with no mask? Doesn't make sense. Thank you, says a retailer sick of looking at people's dirty masks. Uh, because you and all the other patrons in the pub will be fully vaccinated. And what then of schools? Because one of the suggestions recently that we heard from Luke O'Neill was that we would have primary school children wearing masks. Something you'd subscribe to? What has happened? So HICWA gave a report into Neffet last week. They looked at exactly this. Neffet asked for a, for a review from HICWA. The report from HICWA has concluded that we do not need masks in primary school. However, Neffet is now going to look at that and then they'll uh, issue advice to me on that. The ECDC... And, and you, the, the ECDC's advice uh, tends to be masks for secondary school, but the CDC in America, actually, it's, it's, it's much younger. So there's mixed uh, policy around the world. There's mixed policy uh, in Europe. HICWA have said, uh, have advised that we don't need it in primary school. And let's see what Neff had said. But the current policy is as it was, which is secondary school. You mentioned that people who, that, that there is a small percentage of people who are unable to get the vaccine, but that most of those who are unvaccinated have made that as a choice uh, mm. that they won't be vaccinated. What's the current split in hospital case rates between the vaccinated and unvaccinated? It's about 50-50. 
Um, it's not exactly 50-50, um, but it's it's a, a reasonable amount of both vaccinated and unvaccinated. Which is a gross overrepresentation of the unvaccinated given the size of the cohort compared to the vaccinated. Exactly. So for, for the size of the individual cohorts, there are far more unvaccinated people in hospital, yeah. What's the plan in terms of trying to convince those who are still outliers to get vaccinated? Or is there one? Yeah, there is. There are a few things. There are some people who haven't been vaccinated, uh, particularly particularly the younger cohorts who just haven't got around to it yet. So, for example, um, Simon Harris and I this morning were discussing putting having pop up vaccination centres during Freshers Week. You know, we still have uh, 30,000 Janssen vaccines, for example, available to us. It's so easy. It's a single shot. You're fully vaccinated after two weeks. So it's partly around just making it easy for people. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to just continue to engage. There are some people who just aren't going to do it. And and, and ultimately, we just have to accept that, that that is what it is. On the topic of vaccines, the Taoiseach spoke about a, a significant booster programme uh, due to roll out. Do we know what it is going to look like? when we are going to see it and whether or not it'll be a double up with the flu. We know part of it. And actually, so NIAC uh, reported to Dr. Houlihan yesterday. So his advice to me as of today, Anton, is as follows. So uh, booster vaccines for the immunocompromised from 12 years and older, and they're reviewing the, the, the w- wider cohorts. My expectation is the booster vaccine will be wider than that. NIAC are waiting on two very large international studies to inform their final advice on that. So we'll see what they say. But my expectation is we will be going uh, wider. They uh, have said proceed with the winter flu vaccination programme, as you would expect. And interestingly, for pregnant women, they've changed their advice. So the, so the advice up to now has been um, they recommended for a 14 to 36 week gestation. They've now said at any stage during pregnancy, uh, following individual discussion with the obstetric caregiver. And they've also added that they would encourage those living with pregnant women to be vaccinated as well.